All right, in case you missed it, Thor's damage is actually awesome. Just to put this here, as I know everyone not watches YouTube, he's looking insane as a damage dealer, which many of us were skeptical of because of the lack of ignore defense. Obviously, everyone's account is different, but he does apparently smack. I'll be going for him for Hydra at the very least. I'm personally also going to try to see how he does in uh, Spider. Looks like he's out damaging a ton of other top tier damagers like Varl. We're going to see where he gets used from there. What about you guys? Are you going to go for him? Before I dive into whether or not I'm going to go for him, I mean, you guys already know at this point, I, I don't think I have to say that I'm going to dive. And I was I was asking to see how, um, uh, how his uh, damage things work, right? Because of his uh, Thor's passive, like what counts towards his thunder counter and the increase to his overall damage. He says, now that the information is out as of my testing, nothing works to count for his passive except for his own direct hits. I tried Masteries, War Master and Giant Slayer, Phantom Touch and Cursed sets. His passive only counts on hits done by him. His A3 counts every hit for the passive, so if facing Hydra, for example, his A3 hits four targets, so a plus four hit counts for the passive. The A2 is the same. I've seen him repeat his A1 um, itself five times and insta activate the passive since it counted as also 10 hits, which is pretty cool because, you know, that crack, that thunder crack from the sky happening is pretty huge. Passive don't count doesn't count for itself so when you hit the 10 counter you activate the passive hitting let's say four targets you still need to uh you still need 10 counters to activate it again but then boozer came here and uh with his own testing you know shout out to boozer shout out to Aang. um he says war master does count he says try hitting spider 20 you start with nine targets you should never trigger the passive but if you uh but you do if you have war master or giant slayer so the giant slayer mastery so anybody who was wondering how that works, how his passive works in conjunction with quote unquote just damage dealt, um, there's the answer right there. Although now that I think about it, the questions about specifically ally attacks, toxic, and counter attacks, I don't think he was able to answer that or get to it. But I mean, at this point, I'm just gonna figure it out myself or if you guys know, if any of that works, um, let, let me know for sure. I, I'd like to uh, to see what you guys know because oftentimes you guys know things that I don't. So let's see. Let's see now what people are saying because people were not too high on Thor. Now we're gonna see what people are saying. If he is on par or close to on par with meta champions, he's actually awesome. Not everybody has an S tier meta roster. He sounds like he is for Hydra what Helicath was for clan boss. Wasn't earth shattering for people with meta champion teams, but an account changer for a lot of people. Is you know, easily an S tier fusion. This guy says, not a problem with stats over 7.1k attack and over 330 crit damage. Basically, three AOE attacks in Merciless and Slayer gear would like to see a test around 5k attack and 260 crit damage. Well, this guy's in luck because my gear is not as powerful as 7k attack and 330, but my gear can reach 5k attack and 260 crit damage, which I guess is more relatable. So that's probably what I'm going to aim for. I believe these stats are more obtainable by the majority of players. Thanks for posting test runs by various CCs. It's all relative. Don't look at exact numbers. They might have amazing gear, but they're also going into nightmare fights. Anyone who gets them and puts their best gear on it will change their accounts on the difficulty that they will fight. Yeah, true. That's a good point. The best thing you can do is rather than look at their total damage, look at the comparisons to other well-known top champions. It will always be likely for any CC that they have comparable comparable stats and sets etc to what you'll be using unless you're completely end game like completely balls deep for example in nubs's testing scored was considered by many to be a good decent damage dealer scored was completely outclassed by valkanen in a similar team valkanen was outclassed by thor so then you have to ask yourself what level of damage dealers do i currently have are they better than Varl and Valken and, and Ninja, ignoring the uh, Mikage A1 utility, etc.? If not, then Thor is going to be your highest damage option. Trashcan Sam says he sounds tempting. Be interesting if he's going to be better for me than that of my Rathalos. If I can gear him similarly, uh, my Rathalos is 5k attack with 343 crit damage, and that's pretty huge. I'm assuming his Varl, Varl will have the same gear, so at least you can compare him this way. 
Exactly, I hate these kinds of posts that seem to just promote CC vids after they're using their god tier gear to say how good a champion is. It's unrealistic and the majority of us are not Krakens. Well, he's got a point. I think it was Scratch who tested him in good gear first, then put him in great gear. Why does every CC still do, do vids with god-like gear for damage champions? I think I even saw Boozer, who's still a great CC, obviously, do a test on Thor in 6-piece Merciless with 280 speed, 7k attack, and 330 crit damage, and just enough accuracy for hard Hydra. Not like it negate, uh, It's not like it negates his testing, though. Just wish the comparisons were a bit more down-to-earth for people who do not have 5-plus years worth of gear. That's fair. That is all fair. And you know, uh, when I was watching CCs before I became a content creator, early on, I was thinking the same exact thing. So these are all valid points. Well, they cater to both free-to-play and Krakens alike, so why test them out in bad gear? Keep playing the game, eventually you'll get great gear. The idea is based on the champions, not the gear. Um, you know, I think I understand where he's coming from. I understand where both of them's coming from. And my, my case in point is always going to be uh, anytime that we show you guys a champion showcase, it's not always so much about uh, telling you guys to get this, these exact stats and these exact pieces of gear. I think it's more like we just want to show you what's possible and maybe give you something to strive for. Unless you're watching me, I don't think you should watch me because I, I often make a lot of mistakes when it comes to building my champions. So don't always take my word and don't take anybody's word like reference yourself to what a lot of people are saying but yeah for an example like a lot of great cc or not great cc's just cc's in general myself included will tell you like for nukers your standard for what's something you should strive for on a nuker is 5k attack 220 speed and 100 crit damage 250 crit or 100 crit rate and then 250 crit damage in something like savage instinct or lethal or merciless gear now right and that's been pretty much the standard for people who are end game right whether you're beginning end game or late end game that's the standard but if you're still newer to raid and you have like baby gear then i would tell you like okay maybe just shoot for something like 2000 attack um, 100 percent crit damage and like a or 100 percent crit rate and like 150 crit damage or 200 crit damage and then as much speed as you can get you know what i mean like everybody has got different parameters it's up to you to just understand the idea behind what priority stats to have and what gear is ideal but don't necessarily take this as hey you need to do this otherwise you're not going to be able to you know do x y and z or, you know, if you're a little bit mid-game, someone might tell you, oh, three, 3k attack, 4k attack is good. Or 4, 5k attack, uh, 200 speed is good. 100% crit rate, no matter what, though. 200% crit damage. You know what I mean? So just learn the concepts, uh, concepts and you'll get it right. Thor is on par with meta champions. Go for him. It's going to be difficult, but worth it. On one hand, he looks like a good Hydra waved base or wave damage dealer. On the other hand, if you have Michinaki, Trunder, or Varl, or other top tier Hydra champ, champs, what's the point? If you're already hitting for 1.2 billion, 100 million is barely a drop in the ocean, and in Arena, he's completely outclassed by Narcis, Taurus, and Wukong. He's not Armand's Wixwell or Nut. The hype seems more like we thought he was going to be ass, but he is not. Wow, this is uh, more so than wow, this is a game changer. And I can see where he's coming from, right? So let's let's tackle this part. Is Thor going to be better than Michinaki, Trunda, or Varl? Well, uh, someone already said that he's better than Varl, but again, I don't know because I'm only reading what you guys or what the Reddit community is talking about, this sub-sect of the quote-unquote raid community is talking about. And then Trunda, I doubt he's going to hit Trunda level. We've talked about that. Michinaki, maybe, I don't know. But then again, if you don't have these champions, well, now you have an option, right? He says if you're already hitting for this much in like Hydra Clash, another 100 million isn't going to do much. Yeah, I see that point. But this also just kind of devolves into, oh, we're endgame, right? So, I mean, I hit for 1.2 billion in Hydra and I'm still hyped up because I want to enjoy the game because I, I think Thor is a cool fusion. So I'm not really against it going for, for Thor. But I understand where he's coming from. In Arena, yeah, he's going to be outclassed by Tarsis, or Tar Tar Tarsis, Taurus, Narsis, and Wukong, probably. But I mean, those are like the S tier gods in Arena. Uh, Taurus has fallen off, in my opinion, but, you know, he's still up there. Um, it, it's it, If you're at this point, 
if you're at this point where you're asking these questions that Nico is asking and making these arguments, then yeah, you know, don't don't go for him if, if it doesn't seem like somebody or if, if he doesn't seem like somebody you want to go for. Um, you don't have to go for him, but I think the greater majority of people who are new to raid and don't have a three plus year roster are going to be excited for for Trenda. Edit, since people haven't watched the videos yet, Boozer did multiple uh, multiple different 1500 ru uh, runs where Thor averages 60 million more than Michinaki. Best case was 100 million more. Michinaki has Hex, so counting that out, this is probably 100 to 150 million damage more. Keep in mind that Michinaki was 2 star while Thor was 5 star. This is a run that does 1.2 billion damage, so 100 million damage in, ex in exchange for a shit ton of utility that Michinaki brings. I hear where he's coming, where he's coming from. Damage dealers are so good when they have good multipliers and some sort of unique mechanic. Thor has both. You need multiple nukers to bring to bring things in for like uh, 3v3, Siege, Curse City. He's a good fusion, but feel free to skip if you'd like. Exactly. Feel free to skip if you'd like. There's, And this is basically the main point, right? You could find the good. You could find the bad. It's up to you. It just depends on you. Um, he says... he Okay, we're, we're, we're done there. He out damages Varl in the CC's test by a lot, more along the lines of what Ninja is. From what I've seen, Trend is a poor comparison. She's broken and doesn't compare to anybody. He says, mate, 100 million done in seven minutes. That was only seven minutes of a Hydra fight. I'm still going for him. So if you don't have Nut or Trenda, he's extremely attractive. Yes, perfect summary, basically. Thank you, man. I have busted champions for Hydra. Pass, fuck that. Any champ in the test server is going to look insane, but the average player is not pushing this. these stats. Uh, of course, I got talked out of the fusion by a clanmate because he only brings damage and he isn't account changing. Oh well, I wouldn't have the shards necessary anyway. Uh, don't worry, man. There's always going to be power creep in the game, so just uh, so the champions will keep getting better. He's not replaceable for now. He's he's not going to be in the future. I think of yourself. Here now, best champ. It's like reading tabloids adverts when a new ch when a new champion comes out. They all race to get the most hyperbolic video out possible for instant views. Scratch is the worst CC in my opinion. If I pulled Thor six months down the road from now, I can promise he will go straight to the vault. Some new and more interesting champ is going to be on the rise. I have a backlog to build anyway. Lame posts, lame videos. Seems Ash is consistently the best CC who waits so he can add actual value to the community. Um, okay. Yeah, man, you're right. Let's wait a couple weeks, then make a decision to decide whether or not... Yeah, man, you're right. Let's wait a couple weeks, and then make a decision on whether to go for the fusion. Oh, wait. Because the fusion's about to start. My point is that champs are overhyped because it gains more interest and not actually a reflection of the champ's power. People just FOMO. Plus, this is more than just the fusion champ. Thor is leading a whole Asgard event. I expect him to be far better than a regular champ. Nah, to be honest, I get you on the overhype thing. For example, I don't really like that Scratch said he's a must-have in his title because it's not true, but his damage is very good. A lot of us were very specific wanting to know that to decide whether or not we wanted him, which is why I posted. As much as overhyping can suck, missing out is also uh, missing out also sucks if a champion if it's a champion that's gonna help somebody in need of a good Hydra dealer. Uh, as much as overhyping can suck, missing out also sucks if a champion that will help someone in need of a good Hydra damage. As much as overhyping can suck, missing out can also suck, if it can help. You lost credibility the moment you said Ash was the best content creator. What? I think he's good. Hey guys, did you know that if you had gear that doesn't exist on 99% of people's accounts, you, you too can do a lot of damage with any champion? I feel like a lot of people take away from, I guess, the idea of the champion. And here you can see a lot of people are just immediately going straight to hating on the CCs for XYZ reasons. And it becomes less about Thor and becomes more about people's personal issues with content creators. And of course, the discussion between Thor and Freya is still somewhat on the table. Um, I did a collab with HWZ where we both tested Freya out in Arena and it became a showcase for other champions. So uh, I'm not too privy on pulling for Freya. I'm still kind of like on the fence about it. it. It'd be nice, but I'd be really banking on one, making a cool video or a fun video at the very least. And two, hopefully getting a decent champion along the way to Freya. But honestly, if I were to get Freya on my account, she's going straight to the vault. I was thinking about going for Freya, but now I'm leaning towards saving for a Thor soul after the fusion. That's pretty good. Both would be great for my account, but Thor is the easy pick after seeing, seeing Nubs' showcase. I didn't even think of saving for a Thor soul, 
might be the best play for me, actually. Yeah, that's a good good thing. Most uh, probably will have a tight end event for Thor, Soul. Freya will be guaranteed from the Deck of Fate, which will be part of the tight end event. Soul Stones and Shards, that's my guess. That's what I'm prepping for. Hey, he's bouncing off my booty. 